So it's been a wonderful, a wonderful three days. An enormous thanks to everybody for a, a huge uh, level of level of energy and uh, and, and creativity that that everyone's brought to the the, the sessions. Um, it's a pleasure to to, to introduce Victor Lehutov from Central European University. Um, and Victor, uh, jointly with uh, with uh, with Costas, uh, uh, when when he arrives, is going to uh, going to uh, facilitate this uh, closing session to allow an opportunity for yourselves as the Eye on Earth community, as, 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 as represented here in, 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 in Dubai this week, to provide some, some thoughts, some, some feedback, some ideas, and some inspiration as to the ways forward with, with Eye on Earth. So Victor, o o over to you, and thanks again for everybody. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a nice introduction. And, uh... It's my real pleasure to be here again after all those years of all those years being affiliated with the as, as I was saying before, it was maybe 2010, right? I'm looking at, at Bill here, so who's a person whom I first hear on the web, first webinar ever when I was like trying to join the community myself and Bill was chairing this, that specific session. Back then it was environmental education uh, session, as far as I remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, but you were saying very nice things. You were encouraging people to join and to be proactive in what was going on. And thanks, uh, Bill, to you, and thanks for everyone else who was who was with uh, this uh, INOS initiative for all those uh, years, actually, and forming quite a nice and uh, very very friendly and very encouraging, uh, engaging community. It was great experience for me all those years indeed, and I am happy that I am standing here today in front of this uh, even larger, in a way, community because it's webinar online, and uh, see new faces and uh, hoping for more cooperation and more more successful projects and more development and more initiatives in the future. Right. So as as it was discussed through all those days, we a little bit in uh, different. Uh, Situation now, or rather, we are in new age, new stage of our uh, initiative development. We have alliance representatives here, those who are, you know, governing and who are bringing, and who are, who are, who are kind of not not managing, but uh, helping us to arrange our movement in a better way. And we, of course, have all you those new faces who are here who wants to contribute. So this session was originally uh, planned uh, to see what how we can uh, work together and where we can go and how we can uh, put forward you know, what what's the next stage and to hear from all of you uh, what we should be doing. I, I think that um, everyone this morning received some kind of feedback form sent uh, to us by uh, Derek, uh, who is uh, with us here in the room, and you were invited to provide your feedback and your ideas how we can go ahead and how we can you know, create the community which can help. I don't know if, Derek, you want to say a little bit about the forum or, or mention something about that? Um, we'd hoped that uh, this session would uh, Im uh, immediately follow the closing plenary across the road and that we might take some inspiration from the um, uh, opportunities and the needs that were recognized uh, across the way, but uh, the closing plenary is running very, very late over there. So apologies for that and sorry for any inconvenience. Um, so we, yes, we have the, um, uh, the form. Uh, the form is, we invite you to fill that out at your leisure. Um, just I'd encourage you to do it perhaps on the, on the flight back uh, before it's all forgotten about. Um, as Victor said, um, I'm sorry, I, I kind of wasn't here at the beginning of, the, of this, this uh, discussion. What we want to do is this is the third physical gathering of the uh, convened by the Iron Earth. Um, we have a very substantial network today of people who uh, have expressed to some uh, different levels of engagement, people who have expressed an interest in what the Iron Earth mission and vision are about. Um, we need to move forward to the next realm. In very briefly, and to be very straight speaking about it, um, Iron Earth was launched in 2011 and moved forward. There were a number of really great initiatives and there was a lot of action. Um, uh, there was seed funding. Um, and as the seed funding was expired, then of course energy levels declined. But uh, in 2015, the launch of the SDGs, uh, it was recognized um, that 
what we were about was as relevant as ever, more relevant than ever. The need for um, data from the environment and natural resources sector has come to the come to the fore. Um, uh, Stephen here from Geo, their world is dominated by uh, the extraordinary um, uh, quantum shift, I would say, in demand for uh, Earth uh, observation data, uh, provided you know arising from uh, the plethora of new spaceborne platforms, the use of uh, AI type technologies to do uh, uh, information extraction from imagery. The geospatial side, national mapping agencies, and so it goes on and on. Citizen science, uh, the role of environmental education. So there, there, it's clear there's much demand, never more so than now. Um, we initiated, as you know, a, a series of periodic webinars. Frankly, they were only ever meant to be a stop measure, but they became something of an unexpected success story. And that, tell, that told us that there is an appetite for knowledge exchange for um, best practices, access and visibility of people at the leading edge of what's happening. Um, and uh, although I don't share them all onwards, the number of emails we get back from people who are very appreciative to have access to these, you know, uh, sometimes near bleeding edge initiatives from folks all over the world is really um, super. And it tells me that there is something, we're onto something with this Iron Earth process. Um, those of you who took part in the session that uh, Gillian Campbell from the Chief Statistician at UNEP uh, organized earlier, we heard there in different ways and different, uh, different manifestations of where there is much need for uh, engagement of um, civil society and engagement of society generally. We know that if sustainability is going to be achieved, it's not about sustainable development goals, they're, that, that's, they're, they're measures of progress. We need, to, we need to achieve sustainability and to achieve sustainability we need to have, uh, everyone has to be involved and everyone has to understand. There's massive need for information for all, uh, all stakeholders and we're all stakeholders and we're all multiple stakeholders. We're stakeholders as individual citizens, we're stakeholders as perhaps decision makers, as policy makers, as scientists and so on. So it seems to me there's much need for what we're about. The question is, and, 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 the, and, and the issue I would like to have kind of discussed now, kind of open forum sense here between yourselves, is and what is it we're going to do concretely? What is the specific value add that we as a, as a, as a global network consisting of three core elements, um, an alliance of leading and prestigious organizations that have tremendous convening authority, and we, uh, a, a network, a so-called network coordination unit, kind of a de facto secretariat, and this mailing list, we call it a community, a mailing list of over 5,000 people who have uh, demonstrated an interest in what, in what this sector is about and who you know, periodically engage uh, and, 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 and want to engage. So we have, we have resources, and I think that there is surely a return on investment and, uh, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a resource that we can use from our respective institutions. The question is how? And how do we, how do we, how do we contribute as, a, as, a, as an iron earth community, as a group that is defined by the environment and natural resource sector and the, and the connections between environment and the um, socioeconomic drivers of environmental change and the the, uh, and understanding the implications of environmental change. So it's not just about data, it's about the data to information to knowledge nexus. There's a need for it. So my question, and open it to the floor for an open debate, is what can we do? How can we add value? How can we complement the work of others? We don't want to be territorial. We don't want to be replicating the work of others. There's too much to do to be in that space. There are great other partnerships out there. There are great institutions out there. There are great alliances out there. We've had fantastic contribution this week from the Global Environment Education Partnership. We've had fantastic um, contribution from the Global Citizen Science Partnership. These are fantastic initiatives. Those initiatives can be cross-fertilized. Cross so there's a lot we can do. There's a lot we can, we can, we can all work together. Maybe, and I don't know if this is going to be a ludicrously ambitious proposition, maybe Iron Earth can act as some kind of uh, global coordination framework in a very particular niche area 
I'm not proposing that. I'm just saying it's throwing out this bit one scenario. I'm interested to hear what people say. I'm privileged, sincerely privileged, I to be able to spend a fair chunk of my salaried time working on this and trying to make this happen. And we want to make a useful contribution. So I need some guidance. So can I open the floor, please, to discussion? Just one second. Um, I'd, uh, we've invited the Alliance representatives of the Alliance institutions here. Um, if you don't mind, gentlemen, because it is your all gentlemen, um, I'd appreciate for the timing just, just to be listening. Um, and we can we can take some comments later and get your, your thoughts and feedback later. So comments from the from the floor, please. Thank you for uh, this initiative, this uh, event. This is very interesting. My name is Yasser Othman. I'm working in Environment Agency. Uh, the point that I, what I see this time, a lot of resources that what we have, what we need to put it in a framework or an alignment, alignment with the framework, and also how can we use or these resources be contributed together for a certain idea we can build like out of this event like think tank and uh, based on that we can make like a priority for it and what is available resources and come up with like a project or whatever can serve all country or all all entities all all in the world again this is my idea about these things okay. thank you uh, sure, indeed. So that's the point that all of us have different resources, different contributes, dif different ideas, what we can do, how we can... Uh, we can build the matrix, what is the resources that are available and uh, to reduce the cost and what is uh, the idea that and we can do like kind of priority for these ideas. What is serve most of the community, what is less priority and we can, in this way that we can come up with like a, a proposal for a, a new project, new initiative, whatever. How could? Yeah, I just, since I'm, as I was mentioning, kind of affiliate, also part of community rather than uh, part of alliance and uh, governance structure or secretariat. And uh, it's uh, my genuine interest and question to you. So what kind of resources are you talking about? And I'm sure it's a question from uh, maybe everyone in this, in this room. Yeah. What exactly resources you said uh, are available which community can use? Can you elaborate on that? For example, we have like a lot of uh, the people that in different background, different uh, expertise in this uh, in different area. This is one of the resources that we can use. Uh, some of the entity or some of the people they have access to uh, uh, a lot of information and data can help in uh, any initiative or any project that we can uh, raise it in the future. Uh, so such kind of resources, not spe not specially funded or or, or uh, money wise. I mean, we have we can use the, the available resources that we're at now as a team, and we can build some idea, and we can it will be reduced. Uh, I'm not saying that it will be zero fund, but it will reduce eliminate uh, uh, the waste of the money for the best use of the money. This is the point. Yeah, great. Thank you. Please, please, Derek. Um, just, I'd like to uh, poll folks for your thoughts on something. Um, in the Network Coordination Unit, uh, the facto secretariat, um, we have an idea um, that was an extension of something that actually came from uh, WRI colleagues some, some considerable time ago, uh, about having essentially a directory of the Iron Earth Network. So our proposal, what we're thinking to do, and, and EAD, have kindly uh, offered a budget if uh, if the idea is endorsed, is to change the Iron Earth website into um, a kind of a community collaboration platform where uh, folks can register, provide some metadata about their interests and geographies and so on, and then to turn that into a, a, a self-directing uh, global um, uh, what do you call it. Um, no, not LinkedIn, but kind of, kind of, but LinkedIn with tools added to it that allow online communication and collaboration, virtual collaboration tools, so that you can you can go in, like, and indeed we, we, the idea was that you would, in fact, voluntarily, if you wish, put your LinkedIn pr public profile in it, 
and make it a searchable resource. And then having then identified a group of candidate uh, collaborators, uh, those that wish to move forward, having had some online discussion, um, could could then communicate both uh, in text and and you know even through you know, VoIP type technologies built into the so basically self-organizing groups that could go away and then you would have collaboration uh, infrastructure and communication infrastructure to to work on so it's, it's a so it's the network coordination unit basically providing a um an enabling service a resource to allow folks to go off and do stuff to find each other to work together um and to and uh, and giving them the tools without interference without uh, uh engagement per se in the, necessarily in the process it's very much a federated um uh, approach so, I mean, is that something that would would be if that if that resource existed, if you could find folks uh, within our domain who had a, um, a particular field, uh, you know, a shared interests, and you could act on them. Yeah. Hi there. Um, I'm one of the new faces <laughs> with Eye on the Earth. This has been a great experience, and I had a couple of thoughts building on that. One of the things we've tried to do with the Global Environmental Education Partnership. Oh, I'm Judy Browse, the executive director of the North American Association for Environmental Education. So there are a number, it sounds like, of different disciplines, citizen science, knowledge. Is there a way for Eye on the Earth to do what you're saying, that each organization that's part of it has a platform so that others know what we're doing and you have a network and we have a network? How do we figure out where our network intersects with your network? So we're about environmental education. We go beyond knowledge, looking at motivation, looking at behavior change, looking at action. There might be people in this network that would want to learn from us and vice versa, that there might be a way to think about that. And I would encourage this network to think about going beyond just knowledge management, but also thinking about those next steps that allow individuals and communities to actually take action and what we know and have learned about that. But there are so many different disciplines that there just seems to be a way to connect the networks. And that's one of the things we're trying to do at an environmental education network with the Global Environmental Ed Partnership. But could some of the different organizations help be the link to the different disciplines in some way that enhances what we're doing and enhances this global network? Don't know all the answers. Thanks. So it's Cindy. It's yeah. I don't have yeah uh, this is Anne Bowser from Citizen Science Global Partnership. Um, I think this would be really useful from my perspective. So one of the things we're doing is building a new citizen science open transdisciplinary database, and I'm knocking on Alex's door to talk about Situation Room and Steve in the front row, trying to talk about how we can loop in Geo. And I know that the education partnership also exists, but we haven't talked to them yet. I could start a Google group and talk to the people that I already know. But to me, the value of the infrastructure that you're considering providing is being able to find the people that I know exist, but don't necessarily have in my Outlook address book. And then also all of us being able to come together to work on a common project under the Eye on Earth framework, which then strengthens the framework as well as leveraging it. Yeah, it's um, again Martin Brockhurst and Citizen Science Glo Global Global um, uh, Partnership. Uh, I, I've been incredibly frustrated, I think, in this uh, sessions that we've had with uh, Eye on Earth and with the the, uh, the UN Global Data Forum because uh, we, we've constantly heard and we heard in Gillian's session the big data gaps that exist uh, globally on the environmental side. And yet I know that there are ways to solve those data gaps where there are proven techniques, proven methodologies, um, all very often within the citizen science community, producing good quality data um, with enthusiastic participants funded at national level. And there is absolutely no way to take those from those national um, pockets of excellence and spread them across the globe to fill in the, the data gaps that are really uh, very large in other parts of the world. And there's almost a blinkered view within those uh, areas that they have to solve the problem themselves, and they don't. Um, that they simply have to be able to be connected with people who've got the right tools for them to use, and also recognize that there are global communities of people that will help them fill the data gaps. Um, but we have no structures that enable us to put funding in place or business plans in place that enable that process to happen. 
uh, because if you think about funding, most of the time it's at national level, or at best it's at regional level, um, and the, the global funding is, is, is mainly in the hands um, of entrepreneurs, if you like, um, who are at various trust funds or whatever, incredibly difficult to access. So what happens is these centers of excellence come up, they perform for their local area, and then they die. And we, I think there's a real opportunity for the Iron Earth Consortium to start to bring together people across, across different disciplines, um, across different communities, to try to solve that conundrum. Because it, it's a much more efficient way of using resources if we can solve that, and it will fill huge data gaps in the SDG program. I can give you lots of examples where you could, where you could do that. Um, and it's not just in biodiversity, it's in air quality, it's in water quality, and it just goes on like that. How much money are you talking about? It, it depends on the schemes. Um, and at the end of the day, um, you're talking about small scale funding to coordinate, almost like um, owners of data and owners of methodologies, and, and seed corn funding out into regions to encourage them to take up those programs and promote those programs. So you have to look at them case by case um, to be able to give you any sensible numbers. But one I've been looking at um, is this Global Mosquito Alert Consortium. And, and we're talking there essentially of a million a year to actually pick the thing up, coordinate it globally, and roll it out across the planet uh, in such a way that you start to impact people's lives um, and reduce the risks that they're running of catching major diseases across the planet. So, I mean, that's a rounding error on Gates' balance sheet. So maybe your issue isn't the funding itself, maybe it's your business case, and maybe this is where this group could help you refine that. And but I, I, I don't want to just dwell on global mosquito. Look, it's just no, but it's one, a good example. It's just one example. Yeah. Um, and we can do the same with air quality. We can do the same with water quality. Um, we've, we've got the proven techniques now. We've got the peer-reviewed papers that show they work. Um, but if you go and talk to the people who are doing it, they're locked into the national programs. They have no capacity to, to come up to the global level um, and no infrastructure to help them do it yet. So we just need a pathway that takes us through the last bit. I also think that in terms of funding, looking at the consortium model, so a, a portion of it supports citizen science activities, the coordination that Martin outlines, but there's also an opportunity for us to bring in funding for other research infrastructures that we're collaborating with through a partner like Gates that is essentially a rounding error, like other open data infrastructures, for example, and then bringing different people in the community together to collaborate on those bids so that we have a very strong business proposition and proposal. Thank you. I, I had two different questions that are maybe not related to each other, or definitely not related to each other. The first is on the citizen science side. I think, I mean, if you attended many of the World Data Forum sessions, or even the sessions here, when citizen science gets brought up, official statisticians are very nervous. And I know there's a lot of work being done on sort of that, um, quality assurance guidelines, but there's not a system in place, and we aren't really talking about, to my knowledge, a system for how data could really be validated at a global scale. And so what you have is you're gonna have a lot of different data providers, so many that a small number of institutes can't validate all of them. So could the eye on earth maybe help with the idea of setting up some sort of a network approach where if one person joins, then they have a responsibility to validate the citizen science products of other people so that then you can have peer reviewed or peer to peer uh, reviewed data that then there's some sort of quality system in place, not just a, a guideline, but a system in place. So that's the first thing, a totally separate stream. Um, and this is more thinking about my own institution and I haven't talked to Alex, so maybe he's already thought this through, but um, we have the Science Policy Business Forum, which is something that UN Environment does to try to bring communities such as this together with the business community and with policymakers. Then there's also the UN Environment Assembly, 
Um, there's the, the GEO meeting, you know, there's some of these big meetings, and I'm wondering if anybody on the organizing community has thought about if there should be some sort of formal relationship between I and Earth, or even informal relationship between I and Earth and some of these uh, bodies that also exist in our respective organizations. Just to, to follow on from what Gillian has just said, I, I mean, the, the the volume of data that is now coming out of the air quality monitoring exercise in, in Flanders, in Belgium, is 50,000 people have participated in air quality monitoring in one small country to create the densest network of air quality monitoring stations ever seen on the planet. And, and it, each of the people that has taken part has paid 10 euros to engage and buy the equipment, so they've bought into the whole program. Imagine scaling that up across the planet, which we got that sort of reaction for something that is impacting, I think in Europe, 400,000 early deaths from air quality. And what the program threw up is a whole new understanding of air quality in Flanders, um, way in excess of what was showing on the predicted air quality models. So once you take something like that program and you scale it, then, as Gillian said, it becomes utterly massive. Um, and you won't control it. That's the, that's the issue. Because once people see the value of doing it, there will be a clamor across the planet for people to get involved. Because 80, 90% of us are going to be living in cities anyhow. So this is something that is really important to people living in urban areas. So I, I like the idea, and, and it'd be very interesting to see how we might be able to develop it. Can I come into the conversation with apologies for not being here. There's miscommunication about starting times. Obviously, Gillian, I wanted to pick up on your point. Um, you have the five alliance uh, partners, and um, I, I think the communication patterns are beginning to grow between each of the five partners, their specific spaces, and then the subset, which is actually an Iron Earth subset. I think it's a very easy and almost casual expansion to begin to look at the various major conferences of each of the five partners to try to find what areas of those conferences may overlap with Iron Earth competency, with Iron Earth possible kind of activity pilots and so on and so forth, um, and build in that requirement in participating in the Iron Earth network. So I really like that idea. In, in fact, um, UNEA is not a stranger to Iron Earth. We've been, we've been participating on Iron Earth for several uh, uh, UNEAs and before then the General Assemblies. Um, so that's a great idea. I want to come back to the citizen science uh, with a semantic note. By the way, my name is Costas Torregas and I'm one of the Iron Earth kind of advocates and, and, uh, and uh, uh, past coordinators of the activities. I want to come back to citizen science. You're right, the, the statisticians do tense up, and I remember a meeting, in fact, in Nairobi, where there was a discussion of citizen science, and Jackie McLean was pushing out that concept, and people just absolutely kind of, you could you could sense the, the negativism in the room. On the other hand, perhaps it's a semantic thing. Maybe if we call it citizen science, that assumes a lot. If we just call it citizen involvement, or citizen intervention, or citizen data capture, or citizen something else, it's, it's I think, the, the, the marriage of the two words that don't have to be. Uh, I'm wearing an Apple Watch, and I could be a data receptor, a data collector. I can, I can participate in millions of people. And in fact, part of the uh, Apple plan was to make biometric data, as you know, uh, in the billions uh, available that would revolutionize the whole health uh, uh, platform. So uh, I, I'm just wondering whether sometimes semantics trips us uh, in uh, kind of stops us from, from being able to move forward. So those are just two quick thoughts that I wanted to, to make, but I really like the thought about somehow synchronizing the major conferences. Once the Iron Earth is, is able to make visible what its competencies are, where we would be strong. And I think the last three days have shown many, many areas of strength for the Iron Earth Network. Thank you. Uh, Maybe more more ideas. Just just to raise one point, yes, yeah, that it's good discussion about citizen science, citizens involvement, public participation, whatever can be calling it. But yet, I would just like to mention this part, part one, significant part, but only one part of what Iron Earth 
was doing, is doing, and can be doing in the future. So, and again, we we'll just have to come back to the point what and how we can cooperate and what we should be doing. So, more points on that because we are kind of closing, uh, getting close to. Where, yeah, please. It's Judy Brass again. Um, and just one quick comment. It might be great to have some kind of advisory group that is more gender balanced just in the future as we think about it just saying that I, I have already told derek that i'm going to try and get a female colleague from geo for exactly that reason to take um hi i'm melissa taggart and i'm with the global environmental education partnership um just a quick comment derek to your idea um i actually think it would be great to create some sort of platform for continued sharing and networking. And I would also say that, um, you know, we, we've actually worked on kind of a, a platform for environmental education called EE Pro. And we've learned a lot from that. And so I would hate, it, it, sometimes you can create something and you think this is wonderful and then no one uses it. So I would encourage if this idea does materialize to do small experiments and certainly reach out to others who've kind of learned what works and what keeps people engaged and what what kind of information and networking is useful in the virtual space. Okay. But I think it's a great idea. Thank you. I mean, and, and, and I, I, we will do that. Um, and I mean, broadly, because the, the amount of knowledge in this room is, is enormous. Hi, Annie Vernig from UNDP. So two things, uh, just to kind of second on that point, we also have a lot of experience with an online community of practice. We've created one uh, called the NBSAP Forum, which works to support policymakers as well. So we have a lot of lessons learned for engagement around that process. So happy to contribute there. The second was a conversation that took place on the sidelines here, uh, going into UNEA for this idea of, there's been a lot, lot of conversations around open data and open platforms and how we build the infrastructure for that and create the core funding for that. And there was, um, a question of whether I and Earth could serve as a convener to host a, a dialogue on the vision for that and what what the ask would be for governments at the next UN Environmental Assembly and what this community thinks should be in place for that type of uh, open data infrastructure and support for data providers, data processors, data platforms, that, that, um, that whole area and how to bring together the right people to craft a vision that could be brought in a coherent form to that to that space. And that's the kind of area where I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, what we absolutely must not do, and, 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 and I you know, hope in, in my role in the coordination unit, is not to tread on anybody else's ground, but to fill gaps and to, and to join and to close gaps by you know, facilitating closure. Um, that seems to me an area where I think there is probably quite a bit of activity happening, but in different ways and different bits and pieces. So more of a, a joining the dots type of exercise. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, just to follow up on, on, on this discussion, we've been also engaged in developing some platforms for people to connect. And where they start to be in use is where you, at uh, additional services such as, uh, for example, you collect travel plans for these people and when you go through some city, they, they have a chance to, to, to meet the partners in, in person uh, and, and uh, connecting this type of platform with project spaces is another, uh, another useful uh, direction. But uh, mostly what I was going to say is just a couple of ideas and I, I cannot say that I understand the scope of um, uh, INRs completely. Um, it, seems to be very broad and uh, that's wonderful and at the same time quite frightening because it's difficult to focus on some things where it's possible to make progress that will be visible uh, and uh, significant. Um, a lot of this meeting was about SDGs and SDG indicators and perhaps that area is very well covered already by a bunch of effort by you know multiple groups that are in the business of uh, collecting data for SDGs, uh, developing methodology, uh, creating uh, report systems and so on. But 
the next step of how you actually use SDGs or evaluate certain practices or initiatives with respect to whether they improve SDG values and how quickly that happens, that is perhaps a potential growth area for uh, for this group. So some kind of scenario analysis that will look at the best practices and initiatives that happened and look at how they can improve the you know, the bottom SDG bottom lines uh, uh, would be a useful thing and uh, infrastructure that would allow you to develop additional indexes, perhaps some composites of those SDG indicators. Okay. Again, apologies for not being here. Did anyone raise uh, in the, the issue of regional uh, differences and variations in the Iron Earth community? Uh, because we had that discussion some years back when it was clear that some some regions favored a few a certain things, other regions were in need of other things, and we never made a concluding decision as to whether some kind of regional strategy, and of course I see a good friend of mine who knows all about regional approaches stand, and maybe he can, uh, he can remind us as well, but it might be something else to consider, the regional strategies that might be relevant for Iron Earth, as opposed to the global strategy. Of course, that has all sorts of requirements underneath it as well. Thanks again. Uh, I, I wouldn't really go into the regional and not talk about the, you know, the, the, the approach, the overall approach. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, we need... Adel, can you say here? Right, here. Can you hear me now? Pardon me? Oh, okay. My name is Adel Farid Abdelkader. I used to work for UNEP as the regional coordinator for West Asia. Uh, I am now more of an, an independent retired uh, colleague. So, um, you know, I have been with the process since uh, AGD in 2002. And, you know, one of the core people who really foster Iron Earth. So the, the idea behind Iron Earth, I was one of the, you know, core people who were behind uh, INERS. Uh, what I would like to say that what we, the opinions and the views in the INERS symposium, uh, it is really more driven by community, INERS community, which is, you know, is very good and there is lots of good thoughts, but we would like to see INERS to see more views more multi-stakeholder representation. And what we see missing, at least from my point of view, is government and intergovernmental institution. Uh, we don't see inter, like, you know, regional policy fora represented and uh, government represented. So I would suggest that whatever views we come up here with the way forward, that we allow uh, or find a venue or another opportunity to, to bring in the views of government and intergovernmental, uh, you know, especially the regional one. Uh, uh, the UN is well represented in, in here as part of the, uh, of the community, but I, I still see that government is not, uh, governments are not, and the intergovernmental or not. Uh, from my experience, the, some of the core shakers and mover in at the country level and even at the regional level are government and intergovernmental institution. The the biggest data producer and user is still our government and the intergovernmental institution. And they are the one who make policies that affect everything, development at the regional and at the national and at the local level. So how we can bring and mix those group with community groups into something that would be implemented at the country level, the regional level and the local level. Thank you. Any parting comments from the gentleman on the front row here? More gentlemen on the front row. Since I have the mic, I'll, I'll take it. Um, 
I, I get, like Ilya, I get really confused about this. We're talking about everything and anything. Focus is, I haven't heard any focus. You've talked about the gaps, which is good, but I have no idea what the focus is. What are we all talking about? We're talking about citizen science, we're talking about environmental data, we're talking about science platforms. This stuff's huge. There's a lot of different things. So focus is my first point, where we all agree to focus on. Um, second point is, I think it was, um, just check his name, uh, Martin, who talked about um, once people see the value. So it would be good to understand who the people are and what the, the value in what. And I know he's talking about system science, generated data and stuff. Um, so for me, that's like determining the audience and the way to reach that audience. And then the third thing that seems to be coming out loud and clear, not just because of this panel, but is diversity, whether that's socioeconomic, geographical, gender-based or whatever. So those are the three things that I've picked up. Thank, thanks very much. I, I, I very much liked um, Annie's comment on uh, uh, harnessing eye on earth to find the, the pathway through um, balancing the need for open data with the need for sustainable and accurate data. And I think that there may be, um, I think that that embraces a number of the themes that we've heard come up um, on citizen science on a number of other, uh, a number of other uh, 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 topics and uh, might be, um, might be a, a, a way to uh, bring Stephen's uh, focus into, into the picture. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, I want to echo Stephen's comments. I think the, the key decision that needs to be made is, is what is I on Earth going to focus on? Um, I mean, I, I, one of the things that's of clear value out of this meeting is the amount of connections that are being made. Um, but beyond that, uh, are we going to pick one or two projects to execute on, whether um, that's a specific dialogue or a specific piece of communications um, or something else like that? Well, I think we have the answer on the logo of IADORT is convene, converge, and collaborate. So I think the focus on, on that capacity and leveraging the communication potential that has been demonstrated in, in the last uh, couple of years, uh, expanding probably the stakeholders uh, that are part of the core of the INET. But I, I really think that convene, converge, and collaborate are at the very DNA of uh, INERT. So the focus, uh, one way to go can, can be to, to strengthen and reinforce that focus. Looking at my colleague Jane, um, uh, who represents a, a, a GD, uh, which is the part of the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi that is uh, represented. Would you like to say some comments, Jane? I think it's just a, um, a real privilege to have spent the last three days with everyone listening. Um, and it always is quite astounding. The, the expertise that Iron Earth brings and the sheer difference in everybody and their opinions and coming together from different angles. I think there's a lot of power in that. I think the last session to me was uh, of real interest and I think it's an avenue where maybe some focus can come is around setting challenges. There are multiple different um, issues that have been raised over the last three days setting those challenges out to the Iron Earth community and seeing how this kind of cross collaboration can help address some of these challenges. And I think that would be a major strength that Iron Earth can, can that community behind it can bring to the table as well. But other than that, uh, a, a very, very big thank you <laughs> from, from a GD and environment agency, but also to Derek for the very, very long hours he spent in organizing this event as well. Thank you.